Hey, what's up with the internet? Today's topic is the Torrid Incarnate, or more specifically, its AoE and beam chaining mechanics, because despite it being arguably the best weapon in the entire game, and certainly one of the most popular, from what I've read on the internet, it would appear that very few people actually understand how its AoE and chaining mechanics work. In fact, in my research on this topic, I found a few content creators who went ahead and explained how Primed Firestorm increases chain length, which is total bullshit. <laughs> Just complete misinformation. Meanwhile, the actually good source for this information is on the wiki, which I am happy to report is dropping truth bombs, and there are some juicy ones at that. However, I found some of this information to be a bit vague and ambiguous, and I was still left with a lot of questions, so I took the liberty of labbing it out, and now I'm here to share my findings with you. So let's just jump right into it, starting with the beam's AoE and chaining mechanics. When fired, the turret emits a single continuous beam that extends out to 40 meters, after which it will fizzle. If before that the beam makes contact with any surface, including an enemy, the beam will immediately fizzle and in its stead spawn an invisible 3 meter radius AoE around the point of impact, acting as an extension of the original beam's hitbox. This AoE cannot hit any target already hit by the main beam, but is otherwise uncapped in the number of enemies it can hit. Also curiously, punch through has no effect whatsoever on this behavior, and the beam will still immediately fizzle on impact in all cases. And that's it for the simple beam hitbox, but that still leaves the chaining mechanics, which goes as follows. For each and every enemy hit by either the main beam or its invisible AoE, it will attempt to spawn a new chain beam. To do so, each enemy hit will check to see if there is a valid target within a 6 meter radius of them, and if the current chain hasn't yet reached its maximum length of 5, it will create a new link in the chain and repeat this process on this new enemy. If there are no valid targets in range or the chain has reached its maximum length, it will fizzle, otherwise it will continue to chain. As for what constitutes a valid target, aside from the range component, the only property being checked is whether or not that enemy is already part of the current chain. Each individual chain cannot target an enemy that is already part of that chain, but if there is any other enemy within range and the chain hasn't already expended its 5 links, the chain will link again. Notably, there is no limit to the number of chains that can be spawned at once, and collectively, the chains are totally capable of targeting the same enemy multiple times, provided it's a different chain each time. In other words, while a single chain cannot target the same enemy twice, when multiple chains are spawned, it's fair game for each one. Similarly, the enemies hit by the initial beam and invisible AoE remain perfectly valid chain targets. Each one will not be able to target themselves with their own chain, but the chains spawned from all the other enemies hit will transfer over just fine. Okay, and now with that out of the way, let's talk about damage. First off, each time the beam chains to a new target, it loses 25% of its damage relative to the last enemy hit in the chain. By the time the chain reaches its final target, it is only dealing a total of 23.73% damage compared to the damage the initial enemy in the chain took. This is a bit of a bummer, but the Torrid is such an obscenely powerful weapon that this isn't actually that bad, and on the plus side, status chance is not diminished at all on chain beams. Unfortunately, this is not the only big damage limiter the Torrid has. There's another huge landmine in the way that its AoE interacts with multi-shot, namely that it doesn't. At all. <laughs> Turns out that invisible AoE on beam impact will completely ignore any and all multi-shot bonuses you have active, dramatically reducing both your damage and status chance, assuming you have any multi-shot in the first place. And indeed, all the chain beams spawned from the enemies hit by the AoE will scale off that no multi-shot damage. Due to the beam's aforementioned inability to pierce targets even with punch through, that means for any given damage instance there can only be exactly one chain beam that actually benefits from multi-shot. Any others must necessarily come from the AoE component, which means they'll all miss out on multi-shot benefits. This is especially unfortunate, because a little known fact about beam weapons is that normally they actually sort of double dip the multi-shot stat when it comes to damaging status effects. Since beam weapons only ever actually fire a single beam, the devs made it so that the multi-shot stat mimics the effect of spawning additional beams by making it instead apply a unique multiplier to both your damage and status chance stats. This mostly works just fine, but in the case of damaging status effects, where regular multi-shot weapons would just get an increase in proc rate, beam multi-shot weapons get both an increase in proc rate and base damage, resulting in abnormally strong status damage. So in most cases, multi-shot is especially good on them, but in the Torrid's case, it loses a lot of points for its AoE ignoring the stat entirely. Oh, also, I should note that despite chain beams appearing to target an enemy's center mass, they are still capable of scoring headshots, potentially more than making up for the innate damage loss from the chain effect. You probably shouldn't count on this though. Oh, and also also, like all beam weapons, note that the Torrid has a spool up mechanic where it loses damage if it hasn't been firing recently. From my testing I got values as low as 38.5% of your full damage, but I'm not sure exactly what the minimum value is. Okay, I think that about covers it. If you are still at all confused about how any of that works, just uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll sort you out. And that brings us to the million dollar question. What is the deal with Prime Firestorm? Is it good? What does it even do on the Torrid? 
Well, first off, let's get one thing straight. It does not have any sort of magic voodoo effect where it increases the maximum chain length or anything. In actuality, it does exactly one thing. It increases blast radius by 44%. You know, the one thing it says it does? <laughs> Now, admittedly, this is a smidge confusing on the Torrid, because neither of its fire modes, Incarn On or Incarn Off, ever actually visually reflect this change. The Incarnate mode's AoE is always just straight up invisible, and the base mode, for some reason, simply does not change the particle effect whatsoever. Seen here is a visual comparison between the base mode's AoE, both with and without the mod. Turns out I might as well have not bothered swapping and just recorded two takes of the same loadout, because it's the exact same. However, when you go to actually test out its effective range, it's clear that Prime Firestorm is indeed doing its job right. With the mod on, I can hit the same enemy from noticeably farther away. And indeed, repeating the same hit test with the Incarnate form active reveals that the mod is functioning as expected on its invisible AoE as well, bringing it up from 3 meters to 4.32 meters. And that is all the mod does. Now, a bump from 3 to 4.32 meters might seem a tad underwhelming, but you might change your mind once you see it in action and realize that this also gives it the potential to spawn more chain beams, both allowing it to spread to a wider area and loop back into the main crowd and damage them even further. Indeed, due to the chain beam mechanics, the Torrid actually has a limited access to innate quadratic scaling. For each enemy hit in the AoE, you will get more chain beams, with each chain beam potentially hitting more targets as well, thus a lot more damage and status that scales with the number of enemies hit. However, due to both the chain length cap and the loss and damage on each chain link, this effect is heavily limited, and it is of course worth remembering that all AoE damage and the chain spawn from that AoE damage don't benefit from multi-shot at all. Now let's take a look at two scenarios. First up, a non-primed firestorm shot into this enemy that results in a single chain beam. This is just to show that indeed, chain beams deal 25% less damage per link in the chain, and the damage numbers conveniently make it pretty easy to track a chain's path. Now let's look at the second scenario. The only real difference between this scenario and the other one is that we are actually using Prime Firestorm. And as you can see, this makes a profound difference. Uh, we were actually hitting three extra enemies in the initial AoE that we were just not hitting at all before, and that spawns three additional chain beams. Uh, you can see quite clearly it snakes up the right side here and goes over here for a total of six enemies hit, one the initial one, and then five chain links. Uh, one here, 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 all the way down to one, five, three damage. Uh, which is obviously significantly less than the initial uh, 1,300 almost damage here. Uh, but that's what you get when uh, no multi-shot plus chaining all the way down to minimum. And uh, with that, it makes it pretty easy to follow the other chains. You can just follow the damage numbers from this one here. Uh, we get two chains running up the right that go all the way over here. Uh, both the main one and an offshoot AoE one. And then there's another chain that just sort of swirls around in here. And as you can see, this significantly amplifies your damage and reach and status chains. So, should you use Prime Firestorm on the Torrid? While there is certainly an argument against it, given the extra enemies hit will always ignore multi-shot, it takes up a mod slot, and a radius increase of 1.32 meters on the Incarnate form seems a tad underwhelming, in the end I am definitely Team Prime Firestorm. The end result of slotting Prime Firestorm is more enemies hit and more beams spawned, which means more range, damage, and status spread all at the same time. It also makes the Torrid even more forgiving of sloppy aim, and as an added bonus it makes the base form cover a wider area as well, which is quite nice. For specific use cases like single target bossing, you could probably skip it if you'd like, but for a general purpose weapon build, my verdict is to treat it like an auto-include these days. But I'm not so adamant about it that I think you're making a big mistake by not running it or anything, it's just not a choice I would make. Let me know if you came to a different conclusion, because I am interested in hearing alternate takes as well. And that's it for this vid, hope you all learned something. If you did, liking and subscribing and all that jazz would be a pretty cool move of you, I think, but you do you, fam. And finally, if you're wondering what other mod slots you should put on your Torrid, well, hold your horses, because I think that's going to be my next vid. Uh, Alright, peace.